Hi, I just thought I'd go over a couple of the questions, or a couple of the things from the chapter seven chapter review, the rates chapter. A couple of important points to note. So looking at question five, parts C and D. First of all is taking, making sure you take care to draw the graphs carefully, showing clearly what they need to show. So we see, we're drawing a graph which shows the effect of a lower concentration of nitric acid, what effect that has on the rate of reaction. Um, a very quick inspection tells us that nitric acid is still well and truly in excess when we've used a lower concentration. So that's nothing we have to worry about. All we need to show is the lower rate of reaction. So when we draw a graph, we need to use a ruler, of course. Rulers are important. Draw a graph. and label them as much as to um, just make yourself fully aware of what you're actually measuring. It's pretty easy to um, say the wrong thing um, when you're just not paying attention to what the graph's actually measuring. So we've got the initial graph which has the mass decreasing rapidly at first and then a logarithmic decline and it's going to become constant at some point so we'll indicate that with a horizontal line ruled of course because no one's very good at drawing perfectly freehand horizontal lines particularly important in the next chapter so we're going to have a fairly rapid rate of reaction and then once all the copper is consumed no more nitrogen monoxide is given off so the mass stops decreasing. What we're asked, so I've basically just copied the graph on the left at this stage. Now we're going to show the effect of a um, lower concentration, of course it's going to slow down the rate of reaction. Since the mass of copper is limiting and the mass of copper is the same, we're going to end up with the same amount of copper, but uh, same amount of decrease in mass, but that's going to end up, that point's going to be reached a little bit later on, perhaps here. So I'm marking the point at which I want the lines to meet and now I'm going to very carefully show how the rate of decrease of mass is slower. The reaction takes longer to go to completion. So the graph is going to look something like that. Final point of course is to label the two lines. So this one is one molar H2NO3. And the other one is two molar H2NO3. Now all these things may seem fairly simple but it's easy to get into bad habits of um, being a little bit shoddy with your graphs, so make sure you don't. Okay, the second point I want to make is about um, theory explanations in the rates chapter. Um, most particularly, making sure you use collision theory correctly. So, five part D asks us to explain the difference observed when we use powdered copper instead of lumps of copper. And the three things you've got to cover are shown. First thing is you need to explain what happens to the conditions. In this case, what happens to the copper? Well, 
we've got smaller particle size of copper, therefore more particles exposed at the surface. Then we have to relate that to cohesion theory. What effect, what does cohesion theory tell us about the effect that has on the rate of reaction? Well, with um, particle size, it's pretty clear. Um, more particles exposed to the surface means more frequent collisions. try and get that word collision in there somewhere. Then finally, relate it back to what actually happened. Uh, just the fact that it causes a more rapid rate of reaction. It's often easy to overlook what's pretty obvious in the whole question. But they're the three basic points you need to make sure you include in every rates theory explanation.